to hide this aorta that I was working on so I can see the imported one. So just unselect that and you'll notice that the aorta copy or the one I imported is now more visible. So I'm going to show you what the imported one looks like. So enlarge the view, turn off crosshairs. So you'll see that this is, we've plotted out the, we plotted out the aorta here. And usually the aorta is pretty straightforward. It's just a curved line. And I can also, so if I just turn on the volume rendering again, you'll see that this should follow the path. Yeah, so it goes through sort of the center of the aorta here. And so you, you continue doing this path planning for all the vessels. And one helpful point that I'll include here is how to find the bifurcation points. So I'm going to go back and turn on the crosshairs. So if we go, so sometimes it's helpful if you're starting a new path, just remember every time you start to plot a new vessel to create a new path. Otherwise, when you get to the later steps like segmentations, the contour groups or the loft and the lofting previews, they won't show up properly. So to make it easier to see, I'm going to turn off that path and I'll just go back to the center here. So and if we were looking for the point where the aorta bifurcates or where the coronary arteries start to appear, you can scroll through and you, you can do this a little slower. You'll notice that at this point, you sort of have something coming off of the side of the aorta right here. So that likely is one of the coronary arteries. And even if you don't know whether it's the left or the right right away, just so that you don't forget where that point is, you can go ahead and start. So create a new path, just like we did last time. Right click, right, right click on paths and create path. And you can name this coronary artery for now. And we once we do figure out which one that is, if it's the left or the right, we can then change the name pretty easily. So we'll name it coronary artery for now. And so we can add a point here and make sure that you've selected the coronary artery. So we don't have any points yet. We can just add, we can add a point. And something else that you can do with your points is you can drag the point around. So let's say that it's a little difficult to add a point manually doing control click. So you just want to click add, but your crosshairs aren't exactly at the point where you want the point, where exactly at the location where you want the point to be added. What you can do is just click add anyways, and then drag the point to where you want it to be. So right now, you can sort of see that we have, we've added a point to that um, coronary artery, and we can continue scrolling. We can continue scrolling to see, to see where that vessel continues. So, so even if your crosshairs aren't there yet, you can add another point roughly on that vessel. Then what you can do is you can click on the new point and then your screen will change. So right now we see that in the sagittal plane, we see the circle. So that's the plane that we, that ideally we can continue in until the circle isn't, the circle disappears or it's not clear anymore. So if we continue scrolling, we'll see, yes, the circle definitely continues. So you can start by plotting, continue plotting in this sagittal point, uh, sag sagittal plane. 
So just like previously, you would do this for all the vessels. And let's go back and see if we can find the other, the other coronary artery. So I will turn off this one. So that's not obstructing our view. And we can just go back here. So this time we're looking for something coming off the other side of the aorta. Oh, okay. So right about here, you'll see that something is coming off the aorta. So you can bring your crosshairs there and make sure again to start a new path. So create path and you can name coronary artery two for now. Or you can name it whatever you'd like. And then we will select this to make sure we're adding points to that path and then add. So it looks like in this case we have our circle showing up in the coronal, coronal plane of view. Coronal, so if we follow the coronal you'll see that the circle continues to move here so we can add a point and then continue adding points, scroll, click, and the process is pretty much scroll, scroll through the scroll through the image slices and add points as you go. Again, scroll. And at some point you might notice that it the circle either um, flattens out or is no longer as visible. So in that case, it's it, it can be helpful to search through the other displays to see maybe if it's changed direction and appeared somewhere there. And oftentimes this happens because the vessels don't, they never continue just straight up and down or straight horizontally, which is why it, it, if it curves around, you might see it more clearly in one display screen more than the other. So in this case, I think it's sh now showing up in the sagittal view. So we can try starting to add points here. And it's actually not too clear there either. So you could always go back to whichever one you were on before and continue adding points there. So now that we've sort of covered our aorta and the two main coronary arteries, you can feel free to continue this on your own. But if we want to get an idea of where we've put these points, you can turn off the crosshairs and turn on all those. Yeah, so now it sort of looks like we have one on either side and that's exactly what we want. So you'll notice that our um, paths don't connect to the aorta. And that's actually, that's, that's not a huge deal for these particular, for these larger vessels, because when we move on to segmentations, you'll see that the paths may still connect to the actual, um, the contour group. But for smaller vessels, like per, for example, maybe the left marginal artery or any branching off of the left or right coronary arteries, you'll want to have your paths sort of connect or go or be as close to these to the larger vessels as, as you can get them so that when you do create the contra groups or the model there's no gap so it doesn't look like you have a, a floating vessel or anything. So again for the sake of time I'm just going to import my the, re the remaining path. So going to search for path and I'll enter this. So I have my path here and I'll just keep the names. Yeah, so I just added in that and I won't go through each and every one of these, but this is the left coronary artery. And if we unselect this, the the oh, one way to actually determine 
which is which. You can 